Well, good morning, uh, YouTube. We are recording live. Well, not live. I'm just recording. I'm actually using vMix again. I know I made that one video that talked about the other uh, program uh, that was free because I couldn't figure out a way to control vMix very well. Well, if you observe, I have found out how to do it. I, vMix is a better program, I have to say. It's not free, but um, if I can control my camera... I was having issues with the other one, the Q... I forget the name of it. BSO, B... whatever it was. BOS. Um, that all the gamer kids use. I was having issues with the output not being good. Uh, and not having to put in a lot of time of trying to tweak how to use the software. I just don't have time. I just worked the weekend. I'm a registered nurse. I already mentioned that before. I worked two 12-hour shifts. Very busy in the ICU at work. So uh, when I get time to come in here and play around, uh, I don't want to take all my time playing with the computer. So as you can see, uh, the main reason I'm making this video is what you're looking at on the bench. Uh, rarely, actually, I, I can't say even rare, very rarely, this is the first time I've ever had the opportunity, there was a ham radio estate sale in my city of Albany, New York, five blocks from my hospital where I work, and I it was able to go over there twice on breaks, um, because it was only this weekend, and obtain some things. This fella died last year. I looked him up. He was 61 years old. I'm not going to share his information because I don't know how the family would feel about that. Or you know, I didn't know this guy. I didn't never talked to him on the radio. But he was from Albany. He was a radio ham radio, radio operator, and he was an electrical engineer uh, as well. So he had a lot of stuff. He worked on computers as well as uh, did radio stuff. So his house was packed with all kinds of stuff. Now. What you're looking at here, and I'll scan around and zoom in on some of these things, is the kind of peripheral little stuff that I picked up, uh, kind of spur of the moment, went back on another break after I got the main things I wanted to buy and bought these things uh, extra. I will show the main things that I went there for uh, after this. That's gonna, this. I'm going to have to edit the two clips together. So, looking around here, this one I think is kind of neat. I'm going to try to, we're going to play with the camera settings. This video is a bit of a experiment too, because I'm using my zoom and my focus and all this kind of stuff that I've been wanting to be able to control on the radio, on the radio, uh, on here. So I'm going to try to use these controls and, uh, this circuit here was on his bench. I believe it was the last circuit he worked on before he died, which I thought was kind of, some would say is morbid, but I found kind of uh, unique. And uh, whether I'll take this circuit apart and build something else on this protoboard, I don't know. But I got these boards like really cheap, these protoboards, like extremely cheap, and they're very nice, heavy duty. The bottom of these are like a copper. It doesn't look like copper. It looks more like brass, but your ground plane is very heavy, solid brass, copper. Um, he was building something on here, and I am no expert in electronics. As near as I can tell, it's all chips, ICs. I don't know what it was, but this I looked up. This chip is some kind of a rectifier chip, and it looks like we have power in over here. And there's a couple tantalum caps here. I think this is a power supply of sorts. And then over here, we have some kind of voltage regulation going on. There's there, uh, there's like a MOSFET there, and uh, I think that's a voltage regulator source. So this is your power rail up here, and your power source. This may have been AC. He's got your power rail with two pl with the wires going in up here, and a couple wires here, and then going to these strips of chips. And I haven't looked up these chips. I only looked up this big sucker. I was trying to figure out what that was. It's some kind of multi-bridge rectifier. And these uh, pots here are all wired back to these chips. Like, you know, you got the pots in the middle and all these yellow wires going out to either side and they're controlling these chips. What this was, I have no idea. Like I said, he was a computer guy too, in addition to being a radio 
die. This is not a radio circuit. No idea. I'm going to try to figure it out just for fun. I'm going to have to look up these chips. I don't know where it would have been, but um, anyhow, that's that. That was kind of just a, a little fun thing. That, you know, it was the last thing the guy worked on. Um, kind of interesting. It'd be, it would be sad to pull it apart in a way. Uh, then I got these corner boards. All these are really nice. Like I said, they're all uh, for building circuits on, you know. And th these were dirt cheap. I got them for almost nothing. And these have um, some chips on them. No idea what they are. That one's pretty good size. But I mean, potentially, you could put these together, build a radio, you know, build your receiver on here, put a power supply on one, bridge them together. Cool stuff. So that's those. Let us zoom out. And again, I'm sort of experimenting with my radio, my, my camera controls, learning how to use them here. It takes a little bit of going back and forth. I'm trying to keep things stable by keeping the camera up on my boom here. He had bin after bin after bin of cords and cables. These are nice little B, uh, BNC connector connecting cables. So you can put pieces of equipment together, radio equipment together. These are really small, skinny uh, coaxes, which are great for just test equipment and hooking it all together. So I grabbed some of them. This is a basic uh, oscilloscope uh, probe. Uh, it's, a, it's a Tektronix. The guy must have worked for this company. It's, it has uh, ID tags on a lot of the stuff that he had. Harris uh, Semiconductors is uh, the company logo on here. But this this is a Tektronix. I ha actually have another one of these. It's basic 1X, 10X Tektronix uh, scope probe. I'm a little zoomed in. It is nice though because now I can see better. I can see what you can see on my computer screen so it's a heck of a lot easier for me to do this kind of stuff and not be guessing where my camera's pointing all the time. This scroll, this probe I was not familiar with. I looked it up. It is a um, scope probe. It just has a BNC connector. It's some kind of a current limiting probe, which I'm guessing it, it, it allows you to do more stuff on the Tektronix scope. I don't know if it'll work on my scope. Hopefully it will. Uh, I assume if you have like high current, high voltage sources, you can, uh, I think that's what it is. You can, you're able to, actually this opens. I popped this open before. So you see it's got a little circuit in here. And uh, again, Harris Semiconductors, the guy I work for. This could be useful though for high current, high voltage type things if you want to probe with your scope. This, which I'm not going to touch the edges, only touch the edges, is just a bunch of ICs. He had boxes and bins of parts. I'm like, I grabbed this, I threw it in a bag just for the heck of it. I don't even know what these ICs are. i got to look up the numbers. This is all mostly heat sinks. Very cool little heat sinks. He had tons of heat sinks. I took a little assortment. There were bigger assortments. And these right here that I just threw in here. Well, those are banana plug-ins, which happen to be in there. The gold-plated banana plug-ins. Very nice. These are bird um, attenuators. Very uh, useful for attenuating signals within when you're doing some testing. A uh, 6 dB and a 3 dB. I looked those up online. Those go for a fair amount on eBay. Again, I get nothing... I didn't pay anything over like five bucks a box for that stuff. You know, it's crazy prices. So, these are very nice test leads. These are high voltage. Well, medium voltage, I guess I would call it. They're 1500 volts, it says on the side here. I know you can't read that. And they're made by uh, Philips. Really nice pliable silicone. These unfortunately are a little big for my probe. But I could probably cut them off and put new connectors on them or, or, or get a meter that fits these. But I'll probably just make them fit mine. Figure out a way to put those are They're really nice because they're long. And if you're probing higher voltages, like even in my Kenwood, my Kenwood has 900 volts in it. Um, you're well insulated away from the tip and not going to zap yourself. Okay, so that is the basic little things. Then I have uh, a couple things I'm going to set up on the bench. 
and I will be back. Okay, round two. Uh, I think I got everything in the shot. I am going to have to pick up the camera and move it around to show you these. The number one thing that I went to that uh, Amistate sale for was the item you see here on your right. And it is the, an HP 8657A single signal generator. I had been actually been looking online for quite some time for one an older model of this. This one dates from 1990. And they had a list of what was going to be there. This was one of them. And I went looking for it and hoping it wasn't sold. And I got in the door and I got it. Uh, that's number one. And this here is an incidental, which I'll talk about in a minute. So this does signal generation from 0.1 up to 1,040 megahertz. So down to like 100 hertz up to 1,040 megahertz, in really gigahertz. And beyond what I'll probably ever use it for, but it does AM, it does FM, and it does uh, any frequency range I would ever want to do. And we, I do have it plugged in, and we're going to power it up. I did power it up there. When I went to buy it, the guy, um, he was doing the estate for the family, I think. And he said, make sure it powers up before you take it. Because uh, he wanted to make sure, you know, people were getting uh, things that worked and, and paying for what they hoped worked. I did not pay much for this. I have to tell you, they go for considerably more online. And shipping, of course, when you save on, sh this thing weighs 35 pounds at least, maybe 30 um, it's big, it's heavy, it's very deep. You can't get that sense from the camera shot, but it is deep. So, um, this is AM. You can change that. It works. Here's our, This is the modulation, by the way. This is the FM modulation. Functional, completely functional frequency. Up and down. All the way. Works beautifully. There's a coarse and a fine. Let's take it up all the way. You can punch in the numbers too, actually. Let's try that. Uh, 999. There's enter. I don't see an enter. I haven't played with this much. I just turned it on and made sure it worked when I was there. And uh, it does. Amplitude, modulation, everything appears to work on it. I mean, I haven't tried the output on it yet. I don't have an easy way to do that set up at the moment, but um, I was extremely happy to get this for the, what I paid for it. I got everything that I'm showing you today for just over 100 bucks, <laughs> so it was a great uh, price. This thing, I'm, I'm holding it. I know I'm jittering around, and I apologize. I'm going to try to switch off my autofocus. And again, this is somewhat of an experiment in just using this camera for other things. This being a simple show and tell. I can't call it an unboxing because nothing's boxed. Uh, so that's working. You can hear the fan running. It's pretty deep. It's pretty big, pretty heavy. It's going to have to, I don't know where I'll put it yet. i got to figure that out. I have a bunch of shelves behind me. I want to have it where I can get at it fairly easily and use it. And... Uh, power. Oh, there's a standby. Oh, it is. I guess it's on standby when the power is off. And uh, it's a little dirty to face, but it seems to work great. So I'm extremely happy with this. This here is a little item that was kind of a throw in at the end. I was just walking around looking at the power. He had, he had shelves of power supplies. And um, this is actually a 6181C DC current source. And I wasn't even sure what I would use it for or anything like that. I wasn't sure what it did, except I noticed it went up to 120 volts. And I said, well, that's interesting. I said, I could use this as a bench power supply of some sort um, on small circuits, you know. Well, I downloaded the manual and started reading up on it and looking at it online. These things sell for quite a bit on eBay. I'm like, why do these sell for so much? And it turns out it's a precision current source, and you can control the voltage down to a very low amount and the current to a very low amount and it gives you a steady current at very low 
uh, voltages and currents and it's used a lot for semiconductors and this guy was a electrical engineer that worked with semiconductors but you can also use it for radios and another thing it mentioned in the manual is it because it limits your circuit your current if you're powering something up and there's a short circuit in it it will not allow it to draw more current than you give it so you won't short something out so it's extremely valuable in that you can control the current as you're powering up a new circuit that's kind of what it's for more or less as far as I can tell I have not powered this up you can see I have it hooked up to my meter I'm going to power this up for the first time I paid uh, next to nothing for this I mean literally it was extremely cheap so let's see we're on uh we're plugged in there's amps there's volts and there is uh your current up here i'm going to throw this on dc is it is a dc current source so we should be good there and let's throw this over let's throw it to amps okay my my little it's lighting up and the everything's moving we're at 67 volts Let's see what the voltage, yeah, here's my voltage, uh, I'm going up, obviously, 82, 85, 88, 90, well, it goes over 100, it says it's 100 volts, the meter goes to 125, 109 volts, okay, is my max voltage, and that's almost line voltage, and this shows you what you're drawing for amps, so this is great for powering up circuits and seeing how many amps you're drawing. And then, of course, as I said, you can limit, and it's not going to show on my meter, you can limit the current that it delivers. So I'm at 2.5 milliamps. You can go to 25 milliamps. You can go to 250 milliamps. And, my, of course, my meter won't draw any current. But you can, uh, and then you can fine-tune. Actually, it is drawing current. And it's set, now I'm up to 110 volts. So I hope this won't, I don't think it will damage my meter. My meter should go up to, like, 300, I want to say. I forget shouldn't hurt it you can see the amp thing moving so it's functioning that's the main thing I want to look at let me change this to volts I don't know this knob says off amps and volts we're gonna to go to volts oh, oh it's just the meter okay so you can switch your meter from amp, how many amps you're pulling to how many volts you're pulling that's excellent and then of course yeah let's see how close it is we're on 80 on the meter I know I'm shaking around with this stupid camera, and I'm sorry. I just don't have anywhere to mount it where I'm sitting, so I have to hold it. Otherwise, I'd have this sitting. 80 amps, 80 volts on there. Let's see. I'm going to go down to 60. I'm on the meter on the thing. I'm looking at it. 60 volts, 60.2, 60.3. And so the big advantage of this, from everything I read about it, it has a very well-built power source with extremely precision uh, components that allows you to control your current and see how many amps you're pulling. So this is going to be extremely useful uh, on the bench as a power supply. And it's working. Okay, so we've proved my camera is working. I'm able to turn off autofocus and zoom in. I'm just going to do a little shooting around here. This is the first time that I've actually made a video with this and I want to see how it's going to come out. If you want to stop watching at any time, please do so. I'm playing with my autofocus and stuff on the, on the, on the computer screen so I can see if I'm doing camera work on this with other projects what I can do with it. Yeah, that's great. Because I'm running vMix, okay? I am running vMix. I think I'm going to buy vMix, uh, probably the cheaper version. I don't need all the bells and whistles. And I do want to mention, like, my last video when I, sh when I was talking about that other program, somebody chimed in and said, that's a kid's toy, you know. He was kind of rude about it, I thought. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm like, I don't know this software. My son told me about it. And, yeah, he's a teenager, but, you know, I'm like, if you want to do something free and cheap, I would recommend the other one if you can get it working right. It ha uh, everybody goes uses it a lot, but uh, the cheaper version of vMix is only 60 bucks, and I'm liking all the control on it. I, I have like, well, let me show you on the screen. I can see everything that I'm videoing. I can control my camera. 
on the left, that white screen over there, that's that's my uh, control and my camera zooming in. That, th this is not part of eMix, that's just my camera thing. Move it off screen. But you can see all your levels, you can see everything that you're filming, and you can you have a lot of control over a lot that this does. I'm And I, by the way, I am filming in 720p. So far, that's a... My camera's capable of 1080, but um, my computer is slow processing 1080p, so until I upgrade my computer, I may be just doing 720p videos for now because the resources in my computer get like totally bogged down and then the computer then the screen freezes and it doesn't uh, doesn't go well. <laughs> so there we have it. That's my little ham radio estate sale that I picked up these things uh, on a work break in Albany and extremely happy to have them. Thanks for watching. This is Tom. Oh, by the way, I, I know I keep doing this. I'm going to go back. I, I am. I do have the K2 on the bench. I've put a few, stuffed a few parts back into it. Not very much done. I've been working a lot. So I don't work as much on these radios as some other people do that make videos. So my videos tend to be sporadic. But uh, we'll get back to them. Thanks and uh, 73.